Good evening, everybody. We got here a 1v1, this time on Ghost Lake, between the Viper and Jeez. Velez. So let's get right into it as I speed up a little bit through the Dark Age. We do have Velez in the red playing as the Italians on the north side of the map. He is already running out onto the lake trying to collect up as much sheep as possible. Missing a couple batches here, but he will get a few. And then in the green to the south, we have the Viper playing as the Goths. So the Goths versus the Italians, uh, very different strategies that each of these players will have to go for. But to begin with, the biggest idea is collecting up the sheep in the middle can make a huge difference when you collect up that sheep and uh, really really that extra food count can get you up to the next age so much quicker can get you up to the castle age quicker and can help you produce some early aggressive Price. aggressive units such as well man at arms which we would expect from the goth player taking a look quickly at what uh, sheep counts they have accumulated and definitely the advantage goes towards the viper down in the south as he's collected his first four he yeah. is going to be trying to engage actually with scouts and he will win this but the villager comes in and because the viper had to run away there he is now well behind for HP and both of the players just wanting to keep their scout alive for now knowing the importance of seeing where the enemy is and seeing what the enemy's village will look like the sheep of the viper are very close into the town center and he's wanting to protect those as much as possible doesn't want to lose that big advantage that he fought to get but Velez has already started his wall off and is already coming forward with a drush. And in response, the Viper has nothing, no military as of yet, but with just a quick little wall here, he will be pretty safe, as his berries are the only thing that are open right now, and he can wall that off pretty easily. But he doesn't make it in time as I slow down here a little bit. Loses lots of HP on this villager, but does yeah. not lose a villager, so that works out pretty well for I him. Am. In the meantime, this yeah. Drush now will just be a pain point, as the Viper's already in the Feudal Age at this point, and what will he do in response? Immediately dropping a stable, and he will be looking to get some scouts out as soon as possible. Of course, with that extra food count with the sheep, he will be in a very good position to be collecting up and producing scouts as he will be pretty healthy when it comes to food counts. Now when we go back to Velez's base, fully walled off on the front, very safe actually in the back here, even collecting a couple of deer. And he has a relic in the walls too. Notice that these two relics are right in front of his base. So a little bit of a relic advantage for Velez. As the first scout comes out, there are already two spears on the field with the Goths. Obviously infantry being such a big advantage. Velez just on his way up to the next age now. Likely will be seeing a drush into a fast castle age from him. As you can see, his food count, his gold count, will be at a Time position right. where he is actually going to be able to just drop a couple of buildings real quick and get up to the castle age almost immediately. And at this point in time, he's just looking to delay, cause issues with his drush. These militia, not expecting to do too much at this point in time, but they are now in. And look at the damage that can be done. Will a villager go down? Nothing that the Viper can do but run, and a villager just stays up. But lots of wasted time here. Another villager so close to going out, but able to do the quick wall. Both villagers so close, but these militia now will fall to the military of the Viper. Although a spearman goes down, you know what? I think at this point in time, this Drush is well worth it. Huge delays on the berries here. And it bought the time needed that even if these walls get pressured at this point in time, he will have already clicked up to the next age by the time the Viper can break through. He is almost in Castle Age resource territory. Blacksmith in the back 
archery range on the front as part of his wall off. And even with these palisades, if they get broken through, there is a town center to protect. And this side is so far away, but the deer are over here as well. If we look over at the viper, he is fully walling himself into a little bit of openness here, but he will likely want to funnel that in towards the town center and get a little bit of extra protection as the second archery range is now up for Velez. He is on his way to the next age and the Viper is still quite a ways away. He might be able to buy his way up if he's super desperate, but he's not quite there. And so that is a uh, interesting point. Even with those extra sheep, he is right now a little bit short on food and that is just due to the fact that he did go for a faster feudal age rather than waiting to uh, do the fast castle. He has a slight villager advantage with the uh, time up to castle age. So the Viper with three extra villagers at this point in time. But once he clicks up, that will start to fade away into the background. And his lead will fall dramatically. These two scouts right now, fairly useless. Uh, once we get a few archers onto the field, the scouts will fall pretty easily to crossbows and mass archers. And uh, it looks like there's even a spearman that did get uh, sent I... forward to try and pick something off. Viper, in response, he is dropping his own archery range. Yeah. And the spearman did make it in yeah. before the full wall off happened, but Viper now will be fully walled. He will be protected, but this yeah. wood line might be able to be ranged with crossbows early on, I uh, will be able to move to one of the back wood lines too, so nothing to be too concerned about yet, but we do have forward archers coming with fletching, so really not, uh, not looking as good for the viper as it was early on in the Dark Age. These will be crossbows by the time they get up, and Bodkin Arrow will also be in, so we will see major range advantages and able to range slightly hey, but the viper yeah, yeah. knowing that that's coming he is just going to back up as much as possible Fine. this spearman very worthwhile able to get lots of great scouting information at this point in time Delated. and the archers just going to cause some damage to the farms cause some delays as much as possible and the viper having to run chopping stragglers chopping Delated. the wood line in the back yeah. With seven crossbows on his face, that is a bit of a disadvantage, but skirmishers will be coming out. Elite skirmisher on the way, and these four yeah. skirmishers, once Elite comes through and Bodkin comes through, they'll be able to engage Jason? against this army fairly yeah. easily. Uh, skirmishers just having a huge advantage, but you know, farms at this point in time, they are pretty pricey, and uh, Viper losing farms left, right, and center as Velez is already expanding his economy one, two, three town centers up and uh, the Viper just not able to do quite the same amount. Impero. Presto. Ein. Now Velez, Ein. he is pushing but Viper only able to get his two town centers up so far. I would like to see a third, but uh, likely he would have to move forward for his third to gain some sort of control. These seven crossbows now against five with one skirmisher coming, as well as two scouts. They will fall, so smart of Velez to be running back, adding a stable of his own so he will be able to engage a little bit better against the army of the Viper and these scouts at this point in time just trying to do as much damage as they can they know that uh, they're pretty much done for when you think of goths you never really think of going scouts but the skirmishers will try to do as much damage as they can in the meantime as this one spearman is still in the back will get cleaned up by the skirmisher of the viper and at this point in time, it's anyone's game. I do give a slight advantage still to Velez. He does have the villager count lead. He does have the town center lead. But the Viper being the Viper can easily turn that around. All he needs is to prioritize some of his military. And no, he is deciding to go for a third town center as well. He is going to catch up when it comes to 
his economy. Presto. And one interesting thing, Velez not creating villagers out of all three town centers. He does not have the food income at this point in time to be producing out of all of his town centers. Quite a bit of gold that's being floated right now, so I'm not sure if he's going to be maybe selling some of that or, or going into something a little bit different than what's expected as we do see quite a few on stone right now. Likely we'll see a castle coming forward at some point in the game. Once you look at six on stone, you know that there's going to be some form of castle coming up eventually. And knights on the field, all ready for the Viper. Nothing out of this stable as of yet for Velez, but would like to see a couple of knights just in response to the skirmishers. Obviously, knights and skirmisher not quite as strong as knights and crossbows, depending on the uh, micro, of course, and the makeup of the army uh, different proportions of knights and crossbows will be able to give different types of impacts running into the skirmishers and now these crossbows all on their own nine crossbows against eight skirms and a knight not a good engagement that you want to run into and so Velez will have to run away at this point in time and safely gets away as the viper decides to just uh, move on back to his home. A knight now coming forward, two knights for Velez, and there are still archers getting made. As a, another town center on that forward gold coming forward for Velez, so that will make his economy very strong. Lots of farms getting placed all over the place right now, so he will get that food economy up enough to be producing out of all four of these town centers as well as making knights that is a heavy task definitely as there are three town centers and now the fourth for the viper as well yeah. we see a monk forward for the viper trying to pick off these knights that monk being such a big difference maker is these knights unable to engage against the skirmishers without that monk Three knights and this many ten crossbows versus the nine skirms and two knights would have been a great engagement and will the monk does not get the conversion. The three knights are enough to clean up. This is swinging the game at this point in time. These three knights can clean up these skirmishers, no problem. Crossbows hiding in the town center, healing up slightly. As the skirmishers of the Viper go down, another monk trying to come forward, but staying a little bit back. If that monk had gotten a conversion, how the tides would have turned in that engagement. As the Viper looking to place a fifth town center right now. Still just the four, I say just, with four town centers for Velez. Um, 11 villager lead for Velez. He has the military advantage at this point in time. This town center actually might be denied. No, it will not. The uh, army of Velez deciding to go to the west instead of to the east of the base of the Viper. But he has house walls in behind. He can quickly wall behind as well. What can we expect going forward? Of course, the one thing in Viper's back pocket is he is the Goths. Getting up to a certain point, the economy of the Goths and the spam that they can produce can beat any army in the game. If they're able to get up to the numbers that they need to get up to, Presto. He will be totally fine to spam infantry across the map. He's not quite there yet, but he is dropping barracks all over the place at this point in time. He is still producing many villagers at a time, saving up for the Imperial Age. He will click up fairly shortly here. He decides to go for a few villagers as well as some extra line of sight for his buildings before he goes up to the Imperial Age, but now he will click. But Velez, faster to click up as a matter of fact, but look how close they are. 
to the next age as Velez begins to come around and the Viper very low on resources but he does have enough to really get started on that spam he just needs some houses he is severely housed he's been housed for quite a while actually prioritizing making barracks rather than making some of his houses that he needs to produce out of these barracks he's not producing yet he needs that army for when this army of Velez comes forward it is just going to clean up these skirmishers and suddenly there are six knights and three crossbows on their way over. Upgrades are coming in for pikemen, but nothing yet being produced. This castle on the front, will it make it up? It will not at this point in time because there are knights coming forward. Need many, many units in order to defend. So the castle does get placed nonetheless just in a safer position. It will make it up. Only three crossbows, that's not enough to deny this castle. But there is another castle from Velez coming forward. The Viper now making pikemen, but will it be enough? He is going to be in the Imperial Age with a castle, but he will be against someone else with a castle in the Imperial Age as well. Immediately, the Viper is able to engage against the army but does not get too many kills only a couple of crossbows picked off already attacking the castle on the other side both of the players are now in the imperial age Velez immediately dropping a siege workshop going for chemistry he will be going for bombard cannons that is a fantastic move to take out this castle as a trebuchet is going to come out shortly and look at the unit of choice, Condo Tieros from Velez, fantastic choice, anti-gunpowder and very strong against the Huskarls that are expected from Presto. the I... enemy. The issue being, Viper's not going for Huskarls, he's going for champions. He's just upgrading now to two-handed swordsmen. That is already in, and look at the numbers that he is able to produce so quickly, but will it be enough? As of now, he is in a pretty precarious position, as this house is falling. He needs more repair villagers, he needs to be repairing this house. This house is down, and suddenly he has an army in his base. Two-handed swordsmen are out. He is engaging well. But is it enough for the Viper to hold off? Look at the massive Condo Tierros coming in. Such high attack. Such great raiding units. Able to take out Trebuchet. Will the second one go down? Yes, it will. As these numbers are just too great for the Condo Tierros. And Viper now without the army to protect his base. Condo Tierros in everywhere. Lots of town centers for protection. But that arrow fire does mean that these villagers are all hey, going to be sir. idle during hey, the time that he is getting attacked. Condotieros hey, will all fall yeah. in the back here. We do already hey, now hey, have champions engaging and in response to the champions we see some upgrades right. and more and more Condotieros likely expecting to see some bombard or hand cannoneers, yes, there we go, hand cannons. Very expensive, but very strong against infantry. And of course, Goths, the infantry is the bread and butter of their army. Barracks falling, and look at this. More and more hand cannons coming out. But will it be enough? Because these are such cheap units to produce for the Goth player. Another castle at the top making market making mills making farms all over the place the engagements now the champions doing well but not doing well enough against the mass of condo tieros now with hand cannons in behind such high attack on these hand cannoneers and the viper being pushed further and further into the corners he is expanding to the east he is expanding to the southwest 
but Velez this entire time completely untouched with 130 villagers against the 91 of the Viper. This massive army, this massive battalion army coming through, beating out the Goths at this point in time, it is as good as over for the Viper as his economy is in shambles. 86 villagers, 49, 35 now of which are idle. It has been on and off idle villagers this entire game. And look how quickly just these small numbers of champions are falling, unable to engage very well, if at all, as we see an archery range coming up, more and more hand cannons coming forward from Velez as the barracks go down. Without the unit production buildings, nothing that the Viper can do in defense, and uh, I believe this is pretty well the end of the game. Even architecture coming in for the Italian player in Velez. And great job for him to split his army, run into the economy, his main army still able to engage, but one, two, three, four, here and there, Condottieros causing damage left, right, and center. Condottiero is very, very strong against champions. And there you have it. The GG is called by the Viper. Overall, it was a fairly even game. Just the early advantages that Velez was able to gain. And I still bring it back to right here. The Viper severely being housed not producing any military because he was focusing on his economy if he was given an extra maybe one minute he would have been able to flood that spam and totally overwhelm well, I... Velez but Velez able to get that early aggression in before the flood the goth flood comes through and that is a fantastic way to play against the goths